I'm Richard Cuff. Welcome back to part two of my conversation with Harold Hobbs II here on the PS Factor. Harold. Thanks for having me back. Yes, part sir. Two. Yes. Yeah, part two, man. We, we had a really good conversation. We, we were talking in general, but I'd, I'd like to, to hear like something specific that you're doing, applying insurance in your life. Absolutely. Um, so one of the things that we were talking about off camera was my strategy that I teach my clients about how to set their children up for generational wealth. And this is an addition to whatever gifts, assets, or investments they may have for the child is insurance is a great way to set your child and set your great grandchildren up. And so right now my son has, uh, we, we would use like a permanent or cash value policy. If you don't know what that is, you can mm -hmm. simply do a Google search and figure out. But basically what it is, is once you, you pay a premium every single month or every year, and the policy accumulates cash value over time if the, if the insured person doesn't pass away, which in this case it would be my son. When he turns a certain age, that policy will have X amount of dollars in the policy, and that money can be used for whatever you choose. So some of my clients choose it to pay for educational expenses like tuition. Some of them may use the cash value to buy their child a car. And then eventually you can use it for other life events like you know, giving your child um, you know, a down payment on a house, mm -hmm. or maybe you want to give them some cash as a wedding present, right? right? And then the parent can, grandparent can pretty much own that policy and then eventually turn it over to their child. So imagine being able to give your child, uh, you know, the responsibility of a life insurance policy, which may be $100, $150 a month, instead of a $300, $400, $500, $600 bill from the federal government for their education. Well, absolutely. We, I'll put this into perspective. The average person says, well, I need to buy a car, a used car. Absolutely. Let's get a used car, $20,000. Sure. Buy here, pay here. Sure. You know, buy here, pay here, 28% interest, whatever sure. they're going to stick sure. it on to you. And now, and you go in and you're thinking, well, I make, I make $500 a week, sure. uh, $2,000 a month or sure. whatever that is. I can make a $400 car payment. Sure. But look at what's in that car payment. Exactly. You know, number one, the inflated price because you bought the car from the buy here, pay here, as sure. opposed to directly from Miss Sally before she sold it to the car dealership. Absolutely. That's the first thing. And the second thing, you're paying that extra amount for that money. Sure. But real blessing is by using the money from your insurance policy, yes. you're paying interest on the money, right? but you're paying it back to yourself. That's exactly, you put it right, right? The interest is pretty much, you're paying it back to yourself. That's the whole point, right? If you don't use the policy and pass away, you can recoup your premiums back plus interest, right? And there are different companies out there that pay more competitive interest rates than others. And so what eventually, as you pay into the policy, it snowballs mm -hmm. and the interest accumulates. And next thing you look up down the road, Maybe yourself or your child has enough money to where they can add this to their retirement, right? It supplements their retirement, plus the death benefit on the policy never goes away. So it's two parts. It's cash value plus death benefit if you pass away. And if you don't, you still have the cash that you put in the policy. Well, one of the things that I, I know that makes the difference is time. And you can't hit 63 years old and say, oh, man, I'm going to do that. You're 63? Yeah. You look good. Oh, thank you. you know, <laughs> I do try. <laughs> yeah, but it, when, when you can't hit 63 years old and then decide that I'm going to do these things, it's when you're 21, 22 years old. Um, but we've been talking some serious strategies. And I mentioned in the in the first segment, the the three B's, build, buy, and birth. Absolutely. Build build your credit and your savings. Absolutely. Buy a house Absolutely. and birth a business. We took that business to be your family business. But let's say now you're ready to actually start a business. Then the next thing after that is insurance. Because when you lay the foundation for insurance, you can protect the business because the business now is an asset. Right. And it's not only is it an asset, it's an income producing asset. Right. That's or right. and some assets they grow just in value, you know, your house, but sure. your house doesn't produce income. Sure. Your business can grow in value and produce income and you can take that money. And so that's the mindset that you need to have is when you're thinking about building a business, think of the business as an asset. A, a good friend of mine described the uh, he said if, if you if you don't know the difference between a um, asset and a liability um, 
kids, cover your ears. If you can wear it on your ass, it's not an asset. Okay? <laughs> Simple as that. And, and those, those are wealth secrets. But the other thing that the affluent know is to take insurance investments and inheritance absolutely and make that the focus absolutely i would agree 100 percent. actually i'm not a considered a financial planner i've just i provide an aspect of financial planner but a real financial planner that would cost you 300 400 500 maybe up to words of a thousand dollars an hour yeah that do planning for large uh, organizations or wealthy people would tell you that insurance is a part of the cornerstone of your financial plan. So when you, most people think about wealth as accumul accumulation, that's a part of it. And they think about investments, but really you need all three, right? You need inheritance, you need, or excuse me, insurance, inheritance, excuse me, investments, and then inheritance yes. to really complete the whole wealth picture. Because what happens if you pass away, mm -hmm. right? Then whatever you could accumulate could stop with you if you're using your job. Maybe you 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 know you have to you are the business that provides the revenue for your company. If you die, get sick, right? You can't continue to work those things. Then how are you going to contribute to the investing or the inheritance part? That's why insurance is actually considered a part of that wealth part because you know you need to be able to maintain your financial picture if you can't create revenue for your family or your business. That's exactly the way to look at insurance. We often look at insurance from a standpoint of if a calamity hits like car insurance or sure. home insurance, but sure. um, in the, even in the world of business, there's this thing called key man insurance. Absolutely. And key man just simply says, what happens if you come there and you, Bob, and Billy are supposed to have a meeting and and Billy has all of the great ideas. And, exactly. And next thing you know, did you hear? Exactly. Billy died. Exactly. No, not right. Billy. Right. Not <laughs> Billy. <laughs> and on the business valuation, Billy, based on his skills and his connections and his education, he would maybe worth millions of dollars in revenue towards that company. Yeah. So how are you going to replace a Billy, right? That's exactly And your company is going to continue to lose X amount of money while you're looking and while you're looking. Exactly. So a life insurance policy on a key person like Billy would help cover that gap until you can, until your business can figure out a, the direction or where to go in from there. So that's an excellent point, man. I can tell you this. We um, we're we're announcing this week. And by the time you're watching this video, we will have already opened the Miriam Arcuff Innovation Center. Sure. Um, as 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 you guys know, my wife passed away back in August 20, August 15th, uh, 2021. Mm. So all our financial plans got triggered, sure. but I never, the plan wasn't that I would be the one here. It was always, I set her up so that she would be set. Only thing that I was going to do was hang around after my death and haunt the house. I wasn't going to haunt the whole house. <laughs> I was just going, I was just going to like haunt the welcome mat. Right. Just, every time a dude <laughs> rang the doorbell, like bing, boom, like boo. Right, right, I mean, right. People running off and <laughs> Miriam, come on. Why do all the men keep running? Because I ain't going to let, let live a perfect... All the, all the potential uh, for candidates. You yeah, know, no, right, that was... That was right in the doorstep. No, I, I wasn't going to leave. That was, And then she, she said something else. She said, we're going to spend eternity together. And I, I would always tell her... I like that. Um, no, we're not. Because I said, till death do us part. Mm. And um, when I die, I'm going to heaven and hang out with Natalie Cole. Because <laughs> that's, that's who I was supposed to marry. I was only 14 years old, and Natalie was about 23, 24. Right. Bro, if I could have got her on the phone for 30 minutes, right. I would have pulled Natalie Cole. Yeah, yeah you're but, lucky your wife, your wife doesn't hear you. <laughs> your wife will have a conversation with you when you see her. She, yeah, yeah. She'll show up tonight. Like, hey, what, what's, say it now. Talk. Yeah, she may be hot in you. So when you come home and you see your welcome man doing funny things, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Moving stuff around in the house. Exactly. But here is, the, I'm excited about opening the Miriam R. In, Miriam R. Cup Innovation Center because it's there that we're going to continue conversations like Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Because I think that now is the time for us to begin to develop. Right. A, a plan and a strategy that our children can implement. Sure. And we have the great opportunity to lay the foundation for the the term trust fund baby to actually become pretty common actually, yes. in our community. And I think that that's the next thing, the next step here. Um, I want to just talk about this recent election. You guys may not be maybe watching it somewhere else, but we're talking about Jacksonville, Florida here. Um, this was pathetic election, man. And, and we're talking about these great moves, these great opportunities. What has to happen to get more involvement, engagement? What? what? I think uh, 
in our community, right, if we're talking about engagement, we have to be aware of who's in our community, right? Jacksonville can be a it's very it's one of the what the third second third largest no it's, it's as, actually geographically it's, it's the largest city in the country it's the largest as far as man land mass but mm-hmm. sometimes you know um i feel like our community is too spread too spread thin right yeah. i think one of the um strategies or maybe one of the missions we should have going forward is to understand who's in your community right who's mm-hmm. doing business right who has a voice if you have a voice and you're not using it, maybe that's something that you can c- contribute. So I like to see the. Com- I think going forward, I think the community should plan on sticking together on things like this. We're not going to see the same on every political issue, but we do have a few things in common that we can unite behind, and that's actually treating each other with respect. Yeah, I, I, I've always said it, and uh, on most of my posts, you'll see the two hashtags: hashtag only love will, hashtag reverse the hate. Exactly. And I think that as as you know, and it's been said before, in, in, in order for the evil to prosper, the good just need to do nothing. And mm-hmm. if good people continue to do nothing, yes, right. the evil are going to continue to prosper. Sure. I am excited about the, the prospect of having you Absolutely. Come to the come to my audience more often. Yeah, bring more to. information. We're going to figure out a way to actually do a, a project and put together that that skill. Y'all, he mentioned to me his background and um, <laughs> how, how I was talking about his background in audio visual. And, it was. Yeah, and, uh, that's what I originally went to school for. It, it, then, what, then you got married and. Mm-hmm. Um, then I got broke <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and I needed a real career. So I actually started my career in finance. I was a banker years ago and that's when I first got my life insurance license and I was a notary. Um, and then I did finance and insurance and I jumped out, did some marketing and then I found my way back into insurance and I've been in business for myself for five years, but my, I've been in finance for like what, 10, 10, 15 years. So well, congratulations on the business success. Sure. I wish you Tons of success in the future. Same to you. Yeah. Hey, man, so let's let's do this. Harold Hobbs the second, the um, owner of the Hobbs Agency. Yep, the Hobbs Agency. The Hobbs Agency. You can find him on the Internet. Google. Google him. Google is something else. And um, we're going to I got to do another show specifically about this new chat GPT and the um, AI. Oh, you haven't done it yet? Oh, bro, I'm doing it. I wrote oh, my I whole book it. this weekend. Really? Yeah, <laughs> bro, I, in oh, a weekend. In a weekend. In a weekend. I wrote an entire book. Just communicating right. with it because it's it's a friend of mine said that's the devil. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I don't know about the devil. I know, no, but no. I sometimes think it's like be some real people behind there just making us think that it's smart, but that thing is really It is amazing. I've written emails, I've written letters to some of my insurance companies, I've written blogs in a weekend. In a pr- the press <laughs> so now that we got time, maybe right. we can we chat beat GPT I think is gonna free us up and give us time to AI to is amazing. Talking to other people and, yeah. and getting to know the human side. But man, we're gonna spend a lot more time here I can't wait. in our space. It's this a pleasure. Is a, love this. I love what they've done with the, the new set. It's not a real bar, y'all, because um the, not no beer flowing up in here. <laughs> this is all all props. Don't don't worry about it. Just water. But, yeah, just just water. Plenty of good water. All right. But Man, it's been a great time. I thank you for coming Thanks for out. having me. It was a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. so you, you it was a pleasure. As I as I will always say, the mic is always on, the door is always open, and you are always welcome. Thank you. I Guys, till next time, I'm Richard Cuff. Be sure to check me out on Instagram at I am Richard Cuff, Facebook, Twitter, and um, TikTok at Richard Cuff, and uh, RichardCuff.com as well. So till next time, take care. <laughs>